Good morning, students, staff, and panelists. My name is Morgan Pringle. Sarah's on mute, and I'm Peyton Moncrief. And today we will be your host for this event. We are representative members of the MAEOE CMIT Green School. We, will, we quickly want to thank the panelists for taking the time to meet with us to support CMIT's Green School campaign, One CMIT, One Earth. Our, cam our campaign promotes and advocates for students to make environmentally smart choices, as well as participating to improve their environmental footprint. A quick thank you to CMIT staff, Ms. Calandria, Mr. Abzar, Mr. Byron, Ms. Osterick, and Dr. Clark for your continued support. This couldn't be possible without the positive attitudes, growth mindset, and dedication of our school community. Also, thank you to all the teachers and panelists that participated in the upcoming video. Now for quick announcements from Layla. <clears throat> The first time I ever recognized Earth Day was actually here in the CMIT community at the middle school through educational lessons and fun activities, things like Mr. Byron's bottle rocket experiments. And it was all a very valuable experience and I'm grateful for being exposed to that scene at such an early age because Earth Day is an opportunity to for climate education and it's recognized as the planet's largest annual civic event. In Earth Day spawned a range of environmental actions and campaigns, including the passage of landmark environmental laws and reforestation projects. So this Earth Day, we decided we were going to create a message of our own here in the CMIT community with some of the staff and students here in the Green Club. So Mr. Wyrum is going to share that now. Earth. It is one thing we all have in common. We all have a mutual interest in the environment. Earth is one thing that all of us share. And Earth is a beautiful living planet home to 7.9 billion human beings, habitat to millions of plant and animal species. There are such amazing creatures and beautiful landscapes throughout Earth's biosphere. Earth provides us All of our needs. But the earth is sick. Earth is sick. Earth is sick. But the earth is sick. Earth is sick. But the earth is sick. But the earth is sick. Our earth is sick. The earth is sick. Why is the earth sick? Greenhouse gas emissions are rising. Greenhouse gas emissions caused by human activities has increased by 7% from 1990 to 2014. Forests are the lungs of our land, purifying the air and giving fresh strength to our people. Ocean health and fish stocks are declining. 87% of our oceans are damaged by human impact. Forests and natural habitats are being destroyed. All these environmental challenges have enormous implications for our economy, society and politics and a nation that destroys its soils destroys itself none of this makes for an easy bedtime story for those who still have their whole lives ahead of them children born into poverty today even those in relatively richer countries most likely won't have the wealth or protection to weather the storms ahead for the sake of our children and for our future, we must do more to combat climate change. As one CMIT. 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 I'm on Earth. With every reason to be helpful, there's still time. But the window is closing fast. You cannot get through a single day without having an impact on the world around you. What you do makes a difference, and you have to decide what kind of difference you want to make. I, Doris Klein, promise to fulfill my responsibility towards Mother Nature as a global citizen and protect my living planet from deterioration and hand over a clean and green planet to future generations. Gelecek nesillere temiz ve yeşil bir gezegen bırakabilmek için 
Çevremi koruyacağım ve onu temiz tutmak için elimden geleni yapacağım. Tabiat anaya karşı sorumluluklarımı yerine getireceğime, yaşadığımız gezegeni korumak için elimden geleni yapacağıma ve gelecek nesillere daha temiz ve daha yeşil bir gezegen bırakacağıma dair sorumluluklarımı yerine getirmeye söz veriyorum. Let's push green sustainability. Thank you for those wonderful kind words for everyone that participated. Now for Nikichi and Chinema for their logo winners. Hi, I'm Chiamaka. Basically, my contribution to the Green School team is that I come up with different ways to preserve an eco-friendly environment here at CMIT. Hi, I'm Nikechi Ekakwe. I joined the CMIT Green Club because I wanted to help save our planet in any way that I could. By contributing to the Green Club, we are taking a further step into the right direction towards a green planet. Now we will be saying the winners for the logo contest. In first place, we have Alicia Grace. In second place, we have Sean Conley. In third place, we have Patrick Brown from 11th grade. And in fourth place, we have Talia McFalling from 11th grade. At the end of each speaker's presentation, students will have a chance to ask questions. You may also ask your questions at CMIT Green on Instagram under their most recent post. Now for Mr. Absar and Ms. Calandria for their speaking contributions. I guess we will move on. <laughs> um, Ms. Osterk, is there any type of words you would like to give the students for Green Day? Oh, you're on mute, Ms. Osterk. <laughs> See, thank you for reminding me. Um, I would like to thank you to everyone for their time to support CMIT North High School Green School campaign. Our, our Green School team is working hard to create awareness of the climate change. We have wonderful guests today, and they will provide lots of information to understand how important it is. I appreciate their time, dedication, and leadership to encourage everyone to save our planet. And thank you. Thank you, our students. Thank, for your, thank you for your remarks, Ms. Ozturk. Um, now introducing our panelists. First up, we have Ms. Deb Hall, a military general from Virginia, Maryland, who will be speaking to us about the importance of motivation when facing difficult situations. Her life embodies service, whether military, rotary, sorority, or church. Mrs. How, or sorry, Mrs. How can be found on any day serving in activities to benefit others. Her passion for service has never wavered. She is a retired general after serving 36 years of military service in the United States Army and Virgin Islands. She indeed loves working and improving her life of her community and abroad and is conscious of her environment. Good morning, Ms. Deborah. Good morning. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, we can. Yes. Awesome. Good morning, CMIT. Thank you, Dr. Clark and the Green School team for allowing me to share in this program. I am humbled and look forward with excitement to an encouraging program. Today on this Earth Day, as a Rotarian, I am pleased that last year 
Rotary International added environmental protection as a focus area. Rotary International saw firsthand how our environment was unknowingly being destroyed. In some cases, to help a community get drinking water means change in practices and mindsets. Rotarians are working diligently to provide clean water, plant trees to prevent soil erosion, and prepare land so communities can provide food for themselves. We are aware that much must be done to ensure the world remains in good shape for future generations. You too have a mission and can help by sharing ways and encouraging others to protect our world. I'm going to encourage you as the Nike slogan says, just do it. This year's theme, Restore the Earth, for me is indeed a call to action. Make no mistake, I see from your newsletter the ways you are remaining engaged in protecting the environment. I see that you are doing your part. As protectors of our environment, there are several ways we can help. Things we can do, projects we can implement, and or support. The question then is, how can we be the change we want to see? How can you impact a more desirable outcome? You have to move. Take the first step and don't stop moving. A few nuggets to help you along the way. Remember the code word, move. M, mission. Know what you wanna accomplish or what is expected of you to succeed. Plan for it. Gather those great ideas you have thought about for so long and share them. Get others to share your vision. O, organize. Put your thoughts together, jot them down, prepare an outline, and set up the team that will implement the concept or actions that needs to be done. Get a group of like-minded people together, people of action, change makers, start the discussion. V, verify. Verify that the idea is actionable, that it can be done. Validate that the requirements are in place, that you have the resources to be successful. Do you have funds to buy what you need? Do you have enough time? Do you have permission to alter or change something? Check, check, and check. An old saying, measure twice, cut once, as the goal is to avoid mistakes. E, execute. Execute the plan. Do what you have programmed. Take the action. As you put your plan in place, constantly evaluate it to ensure it's accomplishing the goal you have set. Alter or change as necessary. If it's not working, start over, but never stop moving. The law of inertia states, an object in motion remains in motion unless stopped by an outside force. Do not stop. As a quick recap, I will provide an example of moving forward. M for mission, we want to plant a peace tree for Earth Day. O, organize. The tree planting committee of the graduating class meets. They decide on a box garden. The funds raised from an ice cream sale will purchase the seeds and the maintenance department will assist the students. V, verify. They meet with the principal to get permission and select a spot. The committee has the fund and the interested, interested students to do the planting. E, evaluate. They plant the box garden and have volunteers from various groups to tender the plants. 
The produce will be donated to local food bank and school lunch program. I do have one slide. So Mr. Bearham, if you can put the slide up. Awesome. So on this slide, in celebration of Earth Day, the four Rotary Clubs on St. Croix got together and I'm third from the left in that slide and we planted dwarf coconut trees. What we're finding here on St. Croix is the demand for coconut and coconut water is steadily increasing, but our coconut population has dwindled. So with these dwarf coconut trees that we're planting, they bear in about three years. So if we start now, we're hoping we're planting on a quarter acre field, just rows and rows of coconut so that we can supply the population. Everybody is interested in coconuts because of the various um, benefits that coconut water now provides. Of course, it's a delicious source of hydration, may reduce blood pressure, support heart health. It's a good source of several nutrients may have antioxidant properties, some benefits against diabetes, and it's beneficial after prolonged exercise. So with that, you can imagine between the tourists and the local, everybody wants a coconut. If you pass our houses, you'll notice many of our yards have coconut trees in there. And I also put on that the Just Do It, it's the Nike brand, but for Earth Day and continuing to save our earth. We just have to do it. MOVE is just a reminder of the mission, organization, verification, and evaluation of any project you have. It's actually that easy. Let's go forth and change the world, one tree at a time. MOVE, I am sure today's panelists will give you great insights and ideas. We just have to do it. Thank you for your time. You can, thank you. Thank you again so very much for the opportunity to have addressed you. And I'm just so excited for the remainder of the panel. Thank you. Thank you for coming in to present and speak. Next, we're going to have some short reminders and a presentation from Dr. Clark. Actually, sorry about that, Mrs. How. Um, I have a we have a question about, or if you could talk about some of the things you've been nominated for. Okay, um, I am currently- Good morning, everybody. Happy Earth Day. Okay. One of the best person I could, I believe that. I'm sorry? I announced you a little bit too early. So Ms. Howe is gonna answer some questions. Uh, all right, okay, thank you, sorry. That's no problem at all. Okay. Um, I am a retired general officer in the United States military. During that time, I've had really good assignments, um, both public and private partnerships. And I was in charge of the Virgin Islands National Guard as we did the response and recovery efforts from the ravages of hurricanes, Irma and Maria. As you know, we're one government. So St. Thomas and St. Croix, we share the same government. In addition, the British Virgin Islands was devastated, so we ended up providing logistical support to them as well. I'm now retired. I engage in my church and my sorority, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Inc. But for Rotary, I am the district governor nominee. And what that means is I'll be in charge of the Northern Caribbean region for the year 2022, 2023. Um, that will be the first year in Rotary's history that a female will be president. So I am so excited to be serving with a woman leading the helm of Rotary International. The 10 countries that are in my region would be like Jamaica, Bahamas, Haiti, Cayman Islands, Providentialis, um, British Virgin Islands, 
U.S. Virgin Islands. So we have 10 island countries, St. Martin is in there as well. And you can understand that the needs, especially when it comes to environmental impacts us so greatly. I'm located on St. Croix and to my west would be Africa. And oh, I'm to their west. And on any given day, the Sahara Desert plume comes over us and we're affected. Same thing, the volcano that had just erupted in um, Grenade in St. Vincent, um, we started to get the ash plume from that as well. Haiti is in my region. Haiti has an issue with water. We have been working diligently to make sure everyone in Haiti can have access to clean drinking water. And, and that's personal for me. So I don't, I don't want to dominate, but did I answer your question? Hopefully. Yes, you did. And I believe Morgan has a question for you also. Yes. Okay. Um, before I ask my question, I just wanted to remind the people watching that you can also ask questions to our panelists on at C-M-I-T-G-R-E-E-N on Instagram in the most recent post comments. And our last question for you, Ms. Howell, is we can see that you are very motivated to help the youth and using your life experiences to encourage others. So do you have any advice for young people such as ourselves to kind of like how to get involved and what kind of programs are out there? Okay, right now you've, you've done the best start because you're involved in your club activities and it usually starts in school. We have some programs in Rotary that engages youths as well. But I tell any youth, if you can get involved in your student government association in any of the clubs in your school, those are extremely great starts. Um, we also look at some of your church organizations because a lot of those groups go out and do things, especially like here in the Virgin Islands, we have lots of beach cleanup. And um, we go out and we do things um, working on saving our coral reefs because those are natural barriers. And once they're destroyed, it leaves our islands vulnerable. As you know, if you live on an island, you don't have anywhere to run. If something comes, it just hits you. So we're very protective of our environment. But like I say, you all are doing the very best thing. Continue to stay engaged. And as you go on and in college and wherever life takes you, get involved. Rotary is always an option where across the world um, and there are other groups rotary has even changed so you can join based on your passion so if environmental is your passion you can join an environmental um rotary group so the sky is the limit but I, I am so excited about the future i am so excited about what you all are doing because as i see you stepping up to the plate and doing their bid i know i'm leaving my world in good hands thank you Thank you so much for answering my question and thank you for taking the time to join us today. Okay, thank you. Okay, and now we're going to have some short reminders and a presentation from Dr. Clark. Let me try this again. So, hi everybody, happy Earth Day. First and foremost, I really would like to thank our panelists, our speaker, Mrs. Howell, Mr. Moberg, and uh, Ms. Mitchell for gracing our presentation today. Your presence actually means a lot to the CMIT community, especially with our students. They would always wanted to see people like you who, who will remind them the value of the earth. I wish that everyone knows that uh, your word that the earth word and treats us and we should treat the earth with care that it deserves because the earth gives us everything from shelter from the food that we eat and every every kind of resources for the earth i wish that we could have always a happy earth day and always that we will protect it and to all of these kind of occasions, I wish that everybody will celebrate Earth Day the way it's supposed to be. Like when we say Earth Day, that the Earth is not sick, that the Earth is something that we could contribute and we could give something to by starting not using this, rather using this. Happy Earth Day, everyone. Um, 
I just want to make sure to say, or thank you, Dr. Clark. I just want to make sure to say that to everybody watching the live stream, to subscribe to CMIT's YouTube channel and do another shout out to the, um, the Instagram at CMIT Green for the Green Club Instagram. Okay, moving on to our next panelist is Eric Moberg, and he is a customer solution manager from Potomac Electric Power Company, also known as Pepco. And good morning, Mr. Moberg. Hey, Morgan, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Very well. Uh, good morning, everybody, uh, and happy Earth Day. Um, as Morgan said, I'm Eric Moberg um, with Pepco Edison, <coughs> or Potomac Edison Power Company. I want to thank uh, all the students for joining today, uh, as well as the students hosting and and the faculty at CMIT. Um, just a quick background on myself. Uh, I, like many of you, um, you know, focused on STEM through my, throughout my high school education um, and then through my undergrad. Um, I attended James Madison University, um, about two and a half hours away from y'all, um, down in Harrisonburg, where I studied integrated, in, integrated science and technology. Um, a bit of a different name, but more of the same in terms of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Um, now I currently work for PEPCO, um, where I work with our largest customers, uh, with our, their most complex energy, um, you know, issues and um, helping them with their sustainability strategies. Um, <clears throat> I've been doing this for about a year and a half now. Um, and previous to that, I worked at ICF, um, implementing energy efficiency programs for a number of uh, Exelon utilities. And if you want to, Morgan, do you have the deck that you could pull up? Um, with some some solar facts that we could maybe just run through. Yep, let me show you right now. So this is our, um, we can start with this. This is our um, kind of uh, solar interconnection document that we have here. So if you're a customer in Maryland looking to interconnect, and I won't state on this too long, but essentially goes through the process of how <clears throat> Pepco interconnects solar customers to our grid. Um, so it walks you through the step-by-step -step process. Uh, it might be a bit more difficult than you think. You can't just put up solar panels on your house, connect to the grid and, and go on. Um, there's a bit of engineering and, and things behind the scenes to ensure that the circuit you're on can take um, solar energy back onto the grid. Um, a lot of the, uh, well, just about every utility system is designed for one-way flow of power initially. Um, so over the recent years, as more and more solar and, and local generation comes online, uh, the grid has to, to form or reform to, to accept power in both directions. Um, so this is just kind of a document. Please review at your leisure if you have any questions. Um, I'm happy to share my email address. Um, to answer anything you may have related to solar, really sustainability in general, um, or this interconnection document. But just some information that we have uh, related to solar that um, just kind of wanted to share here. So here's a little uh, slide deck I put together um, for interesting solar facts that you may not know, maybe you do. Um, just uh, the first solar cell was built in 1954, um, you know, over 66 years old, kind of showing that Solar technology is somewhat still in its infancy. Um, so as you know, the technology improves and efficiencies continue to go up um, you know, over the next you know, decades, we're, we're certainly gonna and hopefully see an increase that allows um, solar to really move to the forefront of, of how we power our homes, our businesses, um, and really how we power our world. Um, this is something I found pretty interesting myself. The first artificial uh, earth satellite that was pow or is powered by solar cells um, and it's still in orbit. So it's <laughs> logged more than 6 billion miles. And if my math is correct, um, that's 757,000 trips around the world. Um, the amount of solar power installed has increased 23 times um, over the past eight years. Um, I think these stats are actually that I pulled were a little outdated. So I'm sure this is well over um, 23 times. And you'll see that um, you know, where we were about 10 years ago in terms of gigawatts um, and to where we are now and probably be well beyond 30 uh, gigawatts of power. So solar is continuing to move to the forefront of, of how we power our lives. 
Uh, and this is my favorite slide of, of the bunch. Um, solar is far and away the most abundant energy source on earth. Uh, 173,000 terawatts of energy, which is even difficult to process. Um, but that's more than 10,000 times the world's energy use. Um, the difficulty with it is how we capture it and how we you know, tie it to the grid and then how we ultimately get it to our end use. Um, but this energy is out there. Um, so as you continue to, to move through your education and your careers, uh, solar is certainly a, an opportunity where, um, you know, we're going to need it moving forward if we're going to protect, uh, protect our earth and, and continue as a civilization. Um, the power is there, which is how we capture it is, is certainly key. Um, thank you so much for that valuable information. I hope everyone that's watching has learned something. And if you don't mind, we're going to ask a couple questions for you. Yep. So the first question is, how are electrical utility companies such as Exelon and Pepco doing to contribute to reducing carbon emissions? Yep. So I would say the main thing in that area is increasing our renewable portfolio standard. Uh, that's essentially our ratio of renewable sources such as energy, or excuse me, such as solar, wind, and hydropower. Um, compared to the to the uh, traditional sources such as coal, natural gas. Um, so whether that's you know purchasing from um, these generators uh, across the country, whether it's developing um, utility owned um, sources of these technologies, um, that's really the main way that utilities are increasing um, and reducing their energy or their carbon emissions. Okay, um, let's see. What type of sustainable projects has your company completed? Yep. So I'll kind of speak for utilities in, in general again. I would say that those, um, you know, developing solar farms and, and wind farms are certainly the number one kind of source of how we get energy and power that's sustainable onto the grid. Um, some other avenues of that aren't necessarily related to the utility itself, but they're promoted and um, paid for by the utility are programs such as energy efficiency programs and electric vehicle charging station programs. So the utilities pump money. Um, into local commercial opportunities as well as residential residential customers, where they offset the cost of these projects. So, if you know, an example being University of Maryland has a cogeneration system in solar, uh, the utility will offset the cost of that project to make it more affordable um, for the for that customer. Um, and we have our first student question from Ramses Payton: um, Is it expensive to install solar, and why? So the price is certainly coming down, um, you know, depending on where you are. And, and the main key behind reducing the cost is your solar renewable energy credits. Um, but th the main cost is kind of the inverter. So you have to install an inverter to, in order to put power back onto the grid. I mean, that's the installation of that as well as, you know, um, you know attaching them to, to your roof or, or wherever you have <clears throat> area to put them. Um, those are kind of the main costs and that the, the price of the panel is really coming down. Uh, but it's still a bit expensive. But, you know, as we move forward into the future, it, it'll hopefully come down where it's affordable uh, for everyone with the ability to put it up. Okay. And I, let's see, I can ask this question for some people at home too. Um, what can we do to educate our families and friends to become aware of these sustainable efforts? Yeah. Um, so there's certainly things you can do at home in terms of, you know, whether it's you know, kind of wholesale changes in terms of purchasing energy efficiency, you know, say water heaters or energy star appliances. Uh, but I would say, you know, certainly on a day like Earth Day, it's a good reminder that sustainability doesn't have to be an overhaul or a replacement of equipment. You can do things as an individual, as a family, uh, as a community to really have an impact, you know, whether that's turning off the water while you're brushing your teeth, um, not running the shower for 10 to 15 minutes before you get in it. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure many people are guilty of that, sometimes myself included. Um, you know, reducing before then you reuse and before you recycle, but recycling is certainly important. Um, and turning off lights when you leave rooms, I would say that just these little things that you can do uh, may not seem huge to yourself as an individual. Um, but if, you know, say everyone at your entire school and their families did it, our local community and everyone within the county did it, um, and you can continue just to <laughs> exponentiate that, um, these small differences can have a huge impact. Um, so, you know, on Earth Day, it's certainly a good reminder to just do these small things um, that may, you know, be insignificant that you think to yourself, but if everyone's doing them, um, certainly could have a huge impact. Okay, thank you. And we have a follow-up question. Would Pepco be willing to teach students to have or about um, small solar machineries to power small devices? 
Yeah, um, we certainly have groups. Um, we have utility of the future groups. Um, we have a number of different outreach efforts where we're looking to kind of educate students. Um, we, we sponsor a number of different programs, um, whether it be the, the DC Electric Vehicle Grand Prix um, and local a lot number of different local efforts. Um, but you know, that's certainly something we would uh, you know more than willing to, to take in, have a conversation, uh, and and see where we could go with it. And I'm more than happy to talk offline about how we could uh, make something like that happen. Thank you for coming in and thank you for talking about solar and answering all of our questions. Um, yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, it's great to speak to everybody and um, I hope everyone, I wish everyone a great Earth Day. And remember that your, your small, um, maybe insignificant things that you do on your own can certainly have a huge impact. Uh, but I appreciate the opportunity and, and happy Earth Day again. Thank you. Our next panelist is es Esther Mitchell, um, a representative of the Prince George's County Department of Environment, who will be giving a short presentation and a live hands-on demonstration. Happy Earth Day to the students, the teachers, the staff, parents, and other speakers. Um, let me share my um, screen with you. Okay. At the Department of the Environment, we have a uh, saying, Earth Day is every day. We celebrate today as the official um, day of Earth Day, but in reality, Earth Day should be every day. What set Earth apart? from other planets is its ability to sustain life. Plants are considered a critical resource because of the many ways they support our earth. Plants release oxygen into the atmosphere and absorb carbon dioxide. And this is, um, the critical part of sustaining life. But some of our habits are increasingly making life difficult to be sustained. And we need to look at how we are doing things. Um, my Associate Director Don Hawkins is on, Hawkins Nickens is on the line and she's going to talk about the Department of the Environment. Don, would you like to come on and share? Sure. Good morning, CMIT. I absolutely loved your video this morning. Wonderful job. Uh, again, my name is Dawn Hawkins Nixon. I'm the Associate Director for the Sustainability of Prince George's County Department of the Environment. Um, our department is tasked with, as you can tell, uh, uh, protecting and enhancing the natural and built environments in Prince George's County. So some of our major programs focus on uh, resource recovery, which is recycling. Um, composting and uh, uh, more effective management of our waste stream, municipal waste, the trash that we pick up from your homes. Um, another division within our department focuses on sustainability. That's the division that I lead. And we are committed to greening our environment with trees um, on schoolyards and communities and uh, sh along stream banks. We are also tasked with leading the Prince George's County uh, Department, the Prince George's County Climate Action Commission, uh, which is tasked with developing a climate action plan for Prince George's County um, to reduce our carbon footprint and also to prepare our communities 
for the adverse impacts that we are expecting from climate change. And I do want to give kudos to your school for recognizing that global warming is happening, that the, um, the climate is changing, and we're all called, all communities as part of the great global community are called to do our part to reduce our emissions and to adapt to this changing climate. Um, we also have a stormwater management division. So we all know that when it rains, it pours sometimes, right? And when the rain comes down from the skies, it hits the ground, some of it soaks into the ground and some of it runs off. And when it runs off in heavy volumes, it causes what? Flooding. And it also carries uh, pollutants to our streams. So our stormwater management division is tasked with uh, controlling that stormwater runoff, controlling it so that we reduce the amount of flooding that could occur downstream, but also control it so that we remove pollutants that are carried from the ground um, into our storm drains and into our streams. And our last division focuses on animal services, right? So we have a animal services department that um, provides the community, the county with adoption services, right? They will um, offer residents the opportunity to adopt pets, cats, dogs, rabbits, birds. There's so many pets at the uh, animal services uh, department um, that have been either uh, sent to the, uh, to the animal services division because owners can no longer take care of the, the pet and they want to give the pet a better home. So um, our department is all about protecting the environment, greening the environment, and ensuring that all human and non-human beings in Prince George's County um, have an opportunity to live a healthy, uh, live in a healthy and clean environment. So with that, thank you, Esther, and good job on preparing your presentation for today. Esther is our master gardener, and she really does a wonderful job at promoting the uh, benefits of, of um, planting healthy gardens for uh, county residents. Thanks, Esther. You're welcome. Um, the master gardener program is part of the county as well as the University of Maryland Extension. And our mission is to support the University of Maryland Extension and the county by educating residents about effective and sustainable practices, horticultural practices that build healthy gardens, landscapes, and communities. Um, right now, we're going to talk about how do plants help the earth? And We'll start with the hydrologic cycle or better known as the water cycle. Did you know that there is no such thing as making new water? All the water that is on the earth was here at the beginning of time. And over, and so the um, water cycle is a continuous movement of water on, above, and below the Earth's surface. And with that, it plants, we, from plants, the plants transpire through their leaves. The water comes up from the roots, transpires through the leaves, go into the atmosphere, condenses, and once it gets full, then it comes back down. Some of the green team today will be participating in a project that is going to show how this water cycle actually works by growing lettuce leaves in a terrarium-like situation. Plants also help with um, photoremediation or phytoremediation. Um, that's when plants are used to reclaim contaminated soil. And it's one of the cheapest and cleanest ways of doing this. Some of the plants are used to remove heavy metal like zinc, 
copper and um, I mean zinc and um, nickel and cadmium from the um, contaminated site. Um, also, sunflowers, um, plants, corn, and even mustard uh, plants have been used to um, reclaim contaminated soil. Plants are like a natural air conditioning and they are used to keep our planet cool as well as keep you cool during the hot summer months. Trees cool the air, the land and the water. And um, it also keeps, um, reduces the temperature around your house. If you have enough trees planted, you could actually stay very comfortable during the hot summer months. Here, you can see the cooling effect and the warming effect of how a tree can affect your um, house and can also save on your heating bills. In the summer, when the trees are full, then it deflects some of the sunlight, which prevent, which provides a cooling effect. In the winter, when the trees have lost their leaves, it allows sunlight to come in and could help to warm your um, house. <clears throat> Deciduous trees, these are trees that have lost their leaves, positioned on the south and southwest side of a building or your house can reduce the solar radiation from the hot summer sun, but also allow the sun to penetrate and warm your home in the winter. Plants help clean the air. Trees are the lungs of the earth. They help settle out and trap dust, pollen, smoke, and air. Also, some large shrubs does the same thing. They also cleanse the air by intercepting airborne particles and reducing heat as well as absorbing pollutants. And <clears throat> this was brought home by a NASA scientist called Dr. B.C. Wolverton, who performed an experiment to determine the effect of houseplants on three pollutants present in spaceships. As you know, in, um, when a spaceship goes up in orbit, it doesn't have the circulating air um, that helps purify and cleanse the air. The air is circulated, but it's circulating over and over. So they needed something to cleanse the air that was in the spaceship. So they used several house plants to provide this um, cleansing of the air. If you have these house plants that are listed at your home, you have gone a long way to cleaning the air in your house from such um, sources or pollutants as inks, paint, dry cleaning, house cleaners, the, um, the chemicals from your um, clothes and furniture, all of this is eking and reeking chemicals into the air on a continuing basis. And your house plant can help clean the air. Some of you have some of these house plants, I'm sure, already. Plants help with storm water runoff. And trees um, are usually um, used to hold the soil and soak up. There are certain um, plants that have water in their name, so you know they are good, like river birch. 
river birch <clears throat> is normally found or originally found near river banks. Um, another one would be hydrangeas. Hydrangeas, the word hydra, Latin for water. So you can see that plants go a long way in holding the soil to prevent erosion and soaking up some of the storm water runoff. Also, rain gardens are used for um, places where water just sit for days. They um, plant um, various plants in there that will soak up the water and um, create a nice um, environment for those. At the Department of Environment, we have a slogan, slow it down, spread it out, soak it in. And this is what plants do for stormwater runoff. Then plants feed the earth. Plants not only feed people, they feed birds, insects, and animals. This is the this is how the food chain gets started. It all starts with plants. Somebody has to eat the plant, then somebody else on the lower chain eats that person or, or that um, particular insect or animal, and it goes up. Um, plants include grass, weeds, vegetables, and fruits. And they come from the ground as well as from the trees. Um, some plants also that are edible also include flowers. So there are certain plants that you can use for flowers. One plant in particular that is used extensively in China is the dandelion. We call it a weed over here. But the dandelion is used, every part of it, the leaves are used for tea, the flowers are used for garnishment and salads. So you can see that um, every part of a plant can be used to feed the um, animals and people of the earth. Okay. Plants also beautify the earth. The picture on the left is from Bouchard Garden in Ontario. It is a sight to behold when you go there. And who wouldn't want to be in a place that looks like these two gardens? It's very calming on you, it relieves stress, and it provides eye candy for you. So now we will start with the Lettuce Cup Terrarian. There are, um, the green team have their um, cups and their soil. Those who don't have it, this is a, a practice you can do to start seeds and to um, do it. This is going to replicate the water cycle. Notice that I have. you will have, um, you will put the soil in the cups and I'm trying to make sure you see it. You will put the soil in the cup and you will open up your package of seed and put and, 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 and put a a uh, couple of seeds in your hand, and then you're going to take and sprinkle them over the um, soil. You're not going to cover them. You're just going to sprinkle them over the soil, and then you're going to wet the seeds and the soil down. Very good. Once you wet the seeds and the soil down, you are going to put a top over it. And once you put the top over it, you're going to put it in a sunny window. One that's going to get at least four 
to five hours of sunlight. And you're going to um, see the water transpire, come up and you'll see water droplets around the top of the um, cap. And then it will continually water the plant until you see, see, you see the seeds germinate. And once the leaves get to the top of the cap, then you want to take the cap off. And there are three things you can do. You can eat, you can cut the um, leaves and eat them. You can transplant the leaves to a larger pot and get bigger leaves. Or you can um, just um, cut the leaves, eat them, and then put the top back on, wet it down again, put the top back on, and just continue to grow the um, seedlings. You can get about three cuttings that way from this um, way of um, planting seeds with the lettuce. And this is leaf lettuce. So they're individual leaves. Each seed is an individual leaf. So with that, I um, thank you and I hope everybody enjoy their lettuce. Thank and you so for much. those who have didn't get the kit, the instructions are on this recording and you can easily do this yourself anytime at home. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for coming in and presenting and thank you for supplying the materials. I can't wait to see my lettuce grow. Okay. And keep me posted. I want to see how your lettuce did. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for all the panelists for joining us today. Um, we are going to get into some short questions asked by some of our students on Instagram. And if you have not already asked a question, you can ask at, at CMIT Green on Instagram or also on our YouTube live stream. So we're going to start off with a pretty basic question that can have a lot of different answers. So. Um, to all my panelists, what is Earth Day to you? Well, Earth Day to me means that we take this time out to pay special attention to what we are doing to help the Earth as well as restore the Earth. This is the day where we put all our focus on helping and restoring the earth. Eric here, I would add that Earth Day to me um, is a reminder to- This is where we put all our focus on- Eric, we put all our focus on- can you, can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear me. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, earth Day to me is a reminder to do the things that you, sh you should be doing the other 364 days of the year. Uh, whether that's, you know, turning off lights and, and just focusing on sustainability, um, but really just doing your part in terms of protecting uh, this rock you know, that we're floating through space on. Uh, we only get one of them, um, so let's protect it uh, best we can. Likewise for me, I, I did all everything because the earth is so important and we, we take so much for granted. So I try to make sure that folks realize what a gem we have in earth and what we need to do to make sure generations beyond us have the opportunity to, to explore it and experience and you know get all the things out of the earth that we can. So I'm excited. I, I like Earth Day, but it's every day. Thank you. Thank you guys for your responses. Yeah. Could you delay, delay give me a second? I'm going to I'm Actually, going to post something in the in the Instagram like the YouTube as well. I'm gonna come back to you Sine, okay? Moving on to our other questions. Um, these are more directed towards everybody. Um, yes, yeah, so you can do your actual Instagram account and then you would need to, and then like the YouTube right now, okay? 
So for Mr. Oh. Okay, ask everyone to like the YouTube. Okay, um, moving on. Um, do you think car companies will release more electrical cars in the future? You want me to take that one, Morgan? Yes, please. My bad. <laughs> you're, you're good. <laughs> uh, most, most certainly. Um, you know, oil is a finite resource. Uh, it's not going to be here forever. Um, if you look at a lot of the major car companies, um, they're they're putting out spec models for a number of different electric vehicles. I want to say GM. Don't quote me on this, but has like somewhere between 20 and 25 um, different EVs they plan to put to the market. Um, you know, you'll see Rivian out of Europe that's you know putting a lot of different trucks and a lot of vans out uh, on the market. So um, as we move forward, you know, hybrids and then eventually just solely electric vehicles are certainly going to power uh, our future in the way we move between places. Okay, thank you. Um, next, we have a question for Ms. Mitchell. Um, would you say having a backyard garden is an effective way to contribute to saving and sustaining our earth? You're muted. Um, you're muted, Ms. Mitchell. Excuse me. Yes, if you have a backyard garden, you definitely contribute not only to sustaining the earth, but also sustaining you. If you have a vegetable garden, that provides you with food. It also provides some birds and some other critters with food as well, whether you like it or not. And also, it helps the water cycle. Also, planting trees goes a long way to helping um, the earth. So um, because of that water cycle that we discussed um, and how the earth um, takes up water, how the trees take up water and then releases it and then the rain comes down, yes, it will go a long way to helping the earth um, and helping us with the tree canopy that we need so much for the earth to remain um, sustainable. All right, thank you for answering. And we have one more question directed at you. Um, mm -hmm. Earlier in the presentation, you mentioned plants that are good to prevent runoff, but are there any plants that someone should avoid planting in their backyard to try and stop runoff? Yes, you should um, try to increase native plantings on the flowering kind. Native plants are always better because they are the ones that sustain life of the um, animals and insects that have been with this in this area since the beginning of time and have evolved with the plants that are here. Um, a lot of plants are not native. They're beautiful and I encourage you to use some of them, but make a lot of your plants native. And anyone who wants a um, list of native plants, some that you may already know, um, you can, um, I will put my email in the chat and you can um, send me a request and I'll send that off to you. In fact, the state of Maryland um, flower is a native plant. Do you know what that is? No, I it's don't the Black-Eyed Susan. It's the Black-Eyed Susan. So I would stay away from a lot of things. There are some noxious weeds that should never be planted. And Maryland has a list of those um, weeds. Avoid um, planting things like um, thistles, and um, oh, there are several others I can't recall right now, but I can also send that list to you also. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And now we have a question for our school administrators. Um, would it be possible for the school to organize events centered around climate and climate action, and even planting things during the summer? Oh, 
Oh, Dr. Clark, would you like to answer that question since you are in the science department? Or Ms. Oster could answer also. Or Mrs. Oster. May I receive the question again, please? Oh, it was, would it be possible? I'm trying to multitask, that's why. It's okay. Um, would it be possible for the school to organize any events during summer centered around climate change, like environmental action, or just planting things? Actually, actually, it is a good idea. Maybe we, you guys can put this one as a, as a green team agenda. So um, come together. I can support you guys. Like um, um, whatever you need financially or like any, any support from the admin team, you will have it, okay? And try to include your friends and teachers and everything. We can definitely support you if you organize something else, okay? Thank you for the answer. Thank you, Ms. Oz. Okay, um, next question for Mr. Moberg. Um, what type of energy trends are you seeing in the energy? Um, oh my God. What type of energy trends are you seeing in the industry due to COVID? So yeah, it's it's a huge swing from a lot of commercial use that you, now you see a lot more residential use as people are working from home and not commuting. Um, you'll see the greenhouse gas emissions have, have reduced given the, the reduction in, in transportation with folks not traveling into work. Um, I would say in terms of things regarding energy efficiency, a lot of commercial buildings as they're unoccupied, have taken advantage of energy efficiency programs. Um, you know whether that's re, you know replacing lighting or HVAC equipment, um, or looking at the building holistically. A lot of uh, commercial customers have taken advantage of that uh, in preps of or in preparation of, of folks returning to the office. Um, but certainly, a reduction in greenhouse gases and then that switch or that trend towards residential use of, opposed to commercial use. Okay, thank you so much. Yep. Okay, um, a little trivia questions for our panelists that somebody wanted to know, anybody knows. When was Earth Day founded? Say that again, I didn't hear you. Also, just a little um, trivia question that somebody asked. Um, does anybody know when Earth Day was actually founded? Or like the year or the day? I think it was founded in 1970, in the 70s, I believe, and um, it continued on and gained momentum as the years went on, and then more groups got involved. Okay, thank you so much. And now, on our finishing remarks, Peyton will read our pledge. Sorry. Uh, so this is um, the pledge that the Green School has had for one team, my team, um, one earth. I promise to fulfill my responsibilities towards Mother Nature as a, as a global citizen so as to protect my living planet from deterioration and to hand over a clean green planet to our, sorry, to our future generations. Um, just... Um, for closing remarks. Thank you again for all of our panelists for joining us. Thank you for the staff for the undeniable support and also a reminder to our watchers to follow at CMIT Green on Instagram and also to follow our media channel on YouTube, CMIT Academy Media. And thank you everybody for tuning in and happy Earth Day. Happy Earth Day, everyone. Happy Earth Day. And, to our, and to our speaker, it's thank you very much. Personally. Thank you very much. We have some uh, questions from our from the Instagram. Some of the students would like to learn about solar panel, like individual solar panel that they could, or solar energy that they could actually put in for their small devices. I hope Mr. Moberg would actually accept the invitations. And some of them also are very um, interested also in, in, in planting, which is one of our objective. I hope the Department of uh, uh, Environmental will actually help us with this plan as well. Yes, and thank sure. you, Ms. Howell, for your 
very uh, motivational speech. 